Hello and welcome back to another pretty HD video. Today we've got another Birmingham City career mode video and I'm sorry for my mini absence. Uh, this series isn't going as fast as I'd like it to, but to be honest, that isn't really my fault. I'm a uh, very, hmm, what's the word? Tied up at the moment, is that the right word? Basically, whenever I get any spare minutes, uh, I don't really fancy editing. Uh, which is mainly why I'm so behind. I've actually played quite a while in front of this, unfortunately, uh, which isn't great. The journey probably won't be happening as well. They are really ridiculously ridiculous to, the, to edit. The amount of re-rendering and rendering I've had to do because I've tried to make it all cinematic. So you might get one of them every now and then, but I, everyone's already saw it. Everyone already knows what happens. I don't actually know what happened yet. I haven't played it. I haven't watched any series. But I know that everyone else has, and that's why the viewership on it is just dreadful. Now, I'm not doing it just for the views, but if you guys aren't invested in the series, there's no point in me doing it again, is there really? You've seen it all already. Uh, as this, you haven't seen already. Birmingham City career mode, a bit more unique than usual. We play against Portsmouth in this game in the EFL Cup, and you can see that we are being completely battered. Uh, and when I say completely battered, I mean torn apart, ripped to shreds, one by one. And look, how that was not Portsmouth's ball, in the end, I don't know. And of course, you do get punished on this game. Luckily, we didn't get punished then though. We are approaching half time. We are being just torn to shreds, piece by piece, limb by limb. Uh, we've been displaced out of our normal play. And after a poor episode last time, where we actually ended up getting an okay result against Wolves, but getting a dreadful result before that, I just felt like this game was just stale. I genuinely felt like this was just dreadful and eventually that really did show Portsmouth's domination concurred all evidence suggested that they deserved that goal and despite a bit of poor goalkeeping it was a good finish from Doyle and what can I say the lead two side take the lead we're playing crap and if we're playing crap like that then I don't really give whether we can see because when we're playing like this we don't deserve to carry on I don't know what the keepers doing to be fair on my part but it was just a completely horrendous half. And all I can say is, I hope Rowett goes in and completely screws at them. Completely rolls them up for the second half. We have not even one half chance. Forget about decisive chance. There is no clear-cut opportunities. And Portsmouth, they punished us. They're a League 2 side that have got nothing to lose. That was even closer. You can see we're approaching the end of the game. And I've done nothing in the second half to return or retribute what we've done in the first half. And we just couldn't commend what we'd, what we'd set out to achieve in this game. And rightly so, we lost. We'll go out the EFL Cup to League 2 side Portsmouth. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's, I've ever been embarrassed that much. It is embarrassing. It's purely embarrassing. I've never lost that like that before um that's a real shocker a real shocker we need a bit of we need something to spice this side up definitely we need something to regenerate it something's not going right and we're gonna have to find a solution because now we've got a game against norwich which, it, which isn't going to be any easier no not against norwich we beat the this team 3-0 in real life that isn't going to happen in this game uh because in real life i don't want to say it was a fluke but we got a bit of luck, and we played fantastically. But Norwich on this game, top of the table at the moment in the league, in this game. And uh, they were in real life. But they, no, they weren't. They could have been in real life if they'd have beat us at this point in the season. But, you know, we've got to that point now where we need to start winning games. And Norwich just wasn't the best game to come around. Because they are, of course, a relegated team. A team that looked good on the counter, looked good attackively, looked good defensively. We get a one brace, however... But that brace isn't complimented. So the upset that we had last time, a complete shocker, really. Uh, can we amend that? <sighs> Morrison with a decent header towards goal. But, of course, it's picked off pretty easily by the Norwich goalkeeper. I don't know whether it's Ruddy or Rudd. Don't know, it's probably one of them. Uh, but they're firing out shots at us. Cameron Drome, our former striker, of course, from the 2010, 2009, 2008 sort of time. Uh, he 
can't really, can't really uh, say that he did very well with us. He did okay, but for Norwich today, he's been a complete beast. And you can see we sort of get taken out there. Whether it's a penalty or not, I'm not really sure. Um, if it is a foul, then it is quite possibly a yellow or red. Nothing's given, I don't think. But look at this. Like, is it even a foul in the first place? I think that's a decent challenge. It was sort of front the side behind sort of thing. Sort of in the, uh, you know, the south west, no, southeast vicinity of the player. But now we've got Paul Callis lining up for the spot. Can Callis finish it? No, he can't. Keeper saves it. The one opportunity we get to take the lead, we don't take it. And at the end of the day, if we don't take opportunities like that, we're not going to win games because this is a game of very few chances uh, for me for Birmingham, we need to take every opportunity we can get because it is so difficult to create chances on this game at the moment, on the difficulty we're playing on, uh, it's proving really tough and I don't mind a bit of difficulty, don't get me wrong, a bit of difficulty is good for us, especially considering the fact that you don't want the series to be boring, you don't want us to be winning everything, we shouldn't be winning everything, but we've got to be fighting for promotion and at this rate we're in relegation zone area. We're fighting to avoid relegation to League One. So we're not playing as well as I'd like. And to be fair, we've just been able to keep them out at this point. We've just managed to keep the door locked, to keep the, everything closed up. But we can't lock up shop forever. We have to do something. And Donaldson certainly was getting aggravated. Substitute Clayton Donaldson. I don't know what I was doing here, but yet again we get a red card. We need to get our temperament right. We need to get... Ah, uh, Morel? No, it's not really a Morel. It's our attitude. It's our aggressiveness. It's genuinely ridiculous. Brady's one to hit one too, but Kujak easily catches it. Uh, but then, uh, all of our work, all of our work taken apart in one ridiculous move on one stupid day. And we fall apart. 1-0 down, I can't see us getting anything from this game now. If we'd have got a brace and we'd have got the 1-0 lead, even if it was a fluke, we may have been able to struggle through to win this game. But the positioning of Kujak was all wrong after a dodgy throw in position. And the decision in the end punished us. And you will see here, we get punished even further. Birmingham City are in a dreadful state. We need help. We are 2-0 down against Norwich. We are falling down the championship table and we are in desperate trouble. I haven't had a career mode that is in this much jeopardy at this, much mo at this moment. We are genuinely in contention to lose our job. This is just madness. Genuine madness. It was a poor game. It was a shame that we fell apart in the final 10 minutes. I mean, for the rest of the game we played okay, but again, didn't create anything decisive. There's no creativity on the pitch. There's no players that I'm looking at and I'm thinking, wow, you had an outstanding game. Well done. And we have got transfer deadline day. We need to do something. We need to do something fast. I've put in a few loans to buy offers because we can't really afford to buy anyone at this current point in time. We do loan out Josh Martin, however. Uh, later on, it was just he was involved in a deal, so I decided to keep that off the cards until I found out what was going on. You can see they all reject the loan to buy offers, unfortunately. Uh, you will see that. But all these players that are shortlisted here, they're essential attacking midfielders. Because I don't feel Fabrini was doing a very good job at this point. His creativity has been lacking. He's been lacking in quite a lot of areas on the field. And I feel like we need a bit of fresh camness. Because we don't actually have a substitute cam. We have, yeah, our new left winger, Murphy, who actually came from Norwich, who can play cam, but he's definitely more of a winger to me. And he's actually been alright so far. I think he's got one goal. And, I mean, he deserves an opportunity to carry on in his preferred position. We shouldn't be playing him in a position that he shouldn't be in. So you can see we put uh, loan offers in for all these players. Some of them Premier League players. Some of them from abroad. Some of them not English. Some of them English. So we will see what happens with them. You can see all of them loan offers get accepted. Now it's just a choice of who do I pick out of the selection based on wages. Now I narrowed it down to these three. Uh, Enrique, uh, the previous one I, whose name I forget, but Barrera as well. And you see Barrera's the second cheapest wage. And I don't know, I just had an instinct with Barrera 
20 years old, he's the oldest, so he's the most experienced. If we are to only have him for a year, what's the point in buying a player that's, I don't know, like 52 rated and not as good? I can see Barrera being the best option purely because he is older. I know, he's just got that look about him as well. He's from Junior FC, which I believe is an Argentinian side. Unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's an Argentinian side. I'll go ahead and accept the offer. Second cheapest wage as well, really cheap at 2300 That hardly affects our wage budget at all. Not even scraping the edge, you can see here are all the players. Uh, basically, in the last hour of the transfer window, I will take you through everything that's happened. Ursula has gone to Barcelona as well, which is just weird. Uh, but either way, let's go through all of the transfers. If you want to see any particular club, just to see how they're getting on in my save, make sure you do pause the video. Uh, but... Overall, we need this because we're in a dreadful state at the moment. We need to rifle ourselves up. We need to get prepared because this season is going to be tough. And with the start that we've had, we've won one game. And that was the very first game of the season. We need to get back on track. We need someone like Barrera with a little bit of magic. He's not going to do miracles, Barrera, but he will certainly add something a different dimension that we haven't had yet maybe even a little bit of intricacy with the ball yet possibly a bit more of a presence in there as well I believe he's a decently tall player you can see our youth squad monthly report as well is here along with the fact that transfer deadline day has ended 337 million was spent which is one of the most or is it 27 sorry I couldn't see uh, but now we've got our monthly squad report, so the start of a new month brings the start of a squad report. Of course, I thought I'd add this in at the end of the episode just so you could see it. And you can see that uh, bits and bobs have happened. But if you want to pause on any particular player, make sure you do. Reese Oxford's doing well. He's a main man of ours. Uh, big signing and probably our best signing so far. And he will hopefully improve in solidity. But the thing is, he's only played one game at this point. So I wouldn't worry about him yet. I'm pretty sure he will prove to be decent in the future at some point, even if it's not on great form now. Davis has gone up as well, which means all our CDMs, who are first team, are in the 70 range now. You can see Reese Brown's also improved by one overall statistic. Magoma's not doing much yet. Murphy's doing bits and bobs. Alt Otterbar's gone up by a whole statistic, and so's Fabrini, despite his well. Well, I would say he's bad form, yet apparently FIFA thinks it's good. Che Adams, he's our main man at the moment, plus five on volleys, excellent showing from him so far. I just hope he can continue it, and we end with Jack Storer, the man with a bit of a temperament. He's out on loan at the moment at Cheltenham, but he is improving in bits and bobs. So now here is our financial and objectives. Here you can see, just have a quick look over them. We've got a few things that we will need to sort out objective-wise, but now the transfer window's done, we can't worry about financial things, that'll just take its place and the balance will balance out we'll see what happens with all that um but that does bring the video to an end so uh, make sure you smash that like button make sure you subscribe and stick around for more birmingham karimo content this has been a very very interesting series so far i want to find out how i do in the end